Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today I'm going to be going over the Unbearable Corruption event in which the Corrupted Urska is added to the game. But before we go over to the Urska, let's go do Event Keys. This of course is the first event of the newly added kingdom, so I will be opening up a bunch of my Event Keys. You may want to do so as well to get uh, any of the new troops if you want. Not any of them are really over the top, most of them are really more towards average, and it's mainly just for getting the uh, kingdom up to either three gold stars or five gold stars. Our goal is five gold stars by getting absolutely everything there maxed. Uh, do keep in mind if you do spend event keys that next week uh, will be a Silver Glade Christie next week for uh, PC Mobile. So you will likely want to save a good number or possibly even all or most of your event keys for next week if you want to get a couple Christine X's or four copies Mythic or whatever you want to uh, do with that because it can be used four of them fully traded on both green and blue Guild War weeks. But of course, Guild Wars, as I mentioned from the previous video, is currently uh, out of commission for a couple weeks. So I don't actually have to deal with that for a while. Figures Christine X would come right when it kind of leaves for a little while. But anyways, let's get into the keys and uh, see what we get. We need two main things here. We need five copies of the legend at minimum, uh, and we need uh, the hardest thing is going to be getting 15 more copies of the hut. So I'm probably just going to keep counting the hut and the new legend that we get. So, well, okay, well, uh, we don't need to worry about the new legend. Three at once. Um, that is very, 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 very above average. Every legend that you do get from this will end up being a, uh, a uh, King uh, Mikhail. Uh, but yeah, uh, main thing we need to count is huts. And as you can see, zero huts. I had a feeling this would happen. This is going to be quite annoying if we keep getting zero huts. Let's see... Oh, come on. Why? Finley, Scarlet, get out the drop hole. Um, but yeah, it's not even worrying about King Macaulay's at this point. We just need to count the huts. I still need 14 more huts. We are going to go through so many resources. No, we don't need you. Uh, or actually, technically, we do still need her, but... Um, okay, there we go. That's what now? Two, five huts. We need ten more huts. Come on, huts. Let's see all the huts. Uh, nine more huts. I like how I'm like, not even paying attention to the legends. <laughs> Because the only one we're really going to be needing more of is the hut. Nine. Eight more huts. Come on, huts. Eight more huts. Confirm. Uh, oh, there we go. Nice. Four more huts. Come on, huts. Come on. Two more huts. Oh, literally. Two there and two more we need total. One more hut, I think. Should probably double check now to see if we actually have enough so I don't burn another 50. Oh, let's just burn another 50. Why not? And zero more huts. That should be enough. And did the game crash afterwards? Good, it didn't crash this time. I think they fixed that glitch. Uh, some of you who saw the stream earlier, uh, we kept uh, just like going, it kept crashing us every single time we left the keys. I believe they fixed that. They also fixed all the, fixed all the other glitches that was occurring with the kingdom, like the new legend not doing his ability or anything like that. But anyways, or not the bonus for his ability. Uh, they also fixed the art, but that should be, oh no, that's one copy off. No! Wait, that is one copy off, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, it's one short. <laughs> Oops! Um, negative. Need one more. Uh, event keys. Miscounted somewhere, is there? There we go. There is the other one. And we get another legend. Not like we need more of him at this point, but there we go. That cut through, like, what? Four or five thousand gems? I would not advise spending that much on it. I am only doing it so we can get the uh, extra HP. I just wait until the kingdom actually gets the invent, unless you're like super, super light game and you actually have this many resources to throw. Otherwise, save a good majority of your keys. The only reason I'm getting is for the extra uh, heart that we're going to get from uh, there. But anyways, oops, why am I going to hero? Let's go into our uh, troops, go into the Urskea, and go upgrade the important ones for now. I'm not going to upgrade. Actually, should we upgrade everything right now? I guess we could. Wouldn't take that long to go through it. But uh, as we do so, I guess I'll go over the uh, new troop as well. Well, I might as well go over just a couple of these because I haven't really done like a full like what exactly is everything kind of video for um, all of the new troops. So as we're upgrading them, I guess we can talk about them. Of course, this is a legend from the new kingdom. Um, the most viable troop or one of the most viable ones added, of course, is the legend. So that is most likely going to be the one that is most viable. Uh, what it does is it explodes a row, uh, deals 21 damage to all enemies and then deals six additional if it is enraged. Uh, this has a one higher max hit than a Sylvanian Moor. Uh, it also, um, with the Enrage, will hit uh, seven more than a Sylvanian Moor. Uh, I'm comparing it to Sylvanian Moor because both of them have a 17 mana cost, both of them use brown, and both of them have the exact same number of explode. It's just his is a row and uh, Sylvanian Moor's is a column. 
And, uh, of course, he enrages himself whenever he gets any brown off the board, which synergizes pretty well with the fact that he is, uh, indeed, and uses brown. So, um, an okay troop, not really anything over the top. Uh, Salvini Mora, I'd still say, is better in many instances, mainly because uh, entangling the enemy is generally better than becoming enraged on yourself. But he's still really good for just tearing things apart with uh, attack damage. And uh, Baba Yaga, uh, mainly this thing is going to be used in uh, Guild Wars and pretty much nowhere else other than Guild Wars, maybe in PvP occasionally. Um, the most infamous thing this could probably be used for is if the enemy team is using a Famine Death combo with like a Ragnagord, like if they're using Scion, um, Ragnagord, um, Famine Death, she'd be really good against that. Because the only two troops really on that team is Famine and Death. Everything else is feeding mana and stuff into it. So she silences the last two troops, which would make them quite pointless. And the reason she's good in Guild Wars is, well, what that team is used a lot. And the fact that uh, she can also summon uh, Yaga's Hut. Also, uh, for any of you that might be having to deal with Valkyrie team too, the Justice team with the uh, Valkyrie Justice Queen map combo, that would disable both uh, Justice and the Queen Mab, and if those are the only two blues on the team, then uh, that would also disable all of uh, the capability of that team as well. So she definitely has some potential for uh, Guild War purposes, if uh, assuming the reworked Guild War is actually, <laughs> will utilize her. Well, we somehow have 215 spare copies of this guy. Um, that is insane. <laughs> That is absolutely insane, but uh, anyone wants them? I wish I could give them away, but uh, I would if I could, but that is an excessive amount of extra copies, uh, mainly because it was the event troop and we ended up getting so many. Um, this little guy right here, he's not really too useful. Amira is exponentially better than him. He does uh, triple damage to blue troops. Amira does twice as much damage, but she does true damage, so doing twice as much uh, true damage is way more effective than three times physical damage. Uh, not to mention, I believe he has a slightly... No, he has a slightly higher max hit, but still, uh, it is better to go with the, um, the Amira compared to that thing. And uh, this uh, hut is pretty useless unless you're specifically using it with either Silent One or a um, uh, or the uh, Baba Yaga are about the only two things you can really use it with it. Maybe the Satsir Magician as well could be an okay combination with it. It basically just hits uh, extra damage or triple damage onto uh, silenced enemies. It doesn't actually reapply any kind of uh, silence them. As far as the rest of this kingdom, which ones did I go over? Well, the new troop that came in, of course, is the uh, Corrupted Urska. Urska explodes a gem and raids uh, random allies for every purple gem destroyed and then creates six skulls. I personally find that the six skulls that it creates gets more in the way than it even helps many times. Um, the main thing that he's good for is enraging other allies. Uh, one thing to note though, which is somewhat annoying, is let's say you use his ability, you enrage everyone, then your front slot takes a skull. And now you have three troops enraged and your front slot not enraged. If you then go and take one purple off the board, it will randomly hit one of your four troops. It will not actually hit the one that is not enraged which is a little bit annoying. Like, if you explode four on your first cast, it will definitely enrage 100% all four of them. But if you uh, do it again and, like, one or two of them aren't enraged for whatever reason, um, it will pick from every single one on your team again. It won't actually roll on only the ones that don't have enraged. So he's a little bit annoying in that regard because after you use up your first enraged, it's a little bit hard to get it re-enraged. So a little bit annoying, and of course, as I mentioned, the skulls sometimes just get more in the way. The fact that he has this explode gem is nice, just for some board control. But other than that, he seems pretty average, slightly even below average, mainly because of his uh, really high inconsistency. Also, none of his traits are particularly uh, notable, other than maybe Inferno Armor combined with Nimble. Uh, Nimble, of course, um, makes it immune to Entangle, uh, and Inferno Armor just for some skull reflex, so you could use it with uh, HP buffs and attack buff combos. Um, to be able to do a okay amount, uh, basically anything that could do HP attack combo would be pretty nice with it, or just assisting other uh, score related troops. Uh, as far as the few I didn't go over yet, uh, Ursketir is basically just a reskinned um, um, orc for the most part. Uh, that's pretty much what he is, a reskinned orc, just slightly different as far as stats and stuff, um, but that's generally what how you're going to be using him. Uh, depending on which one of them has the bonus is basically which one you would use. Uh, Leshy is um, kind of interesting. Uh, personally, I feel like he is the strongest troop in this kingdom. Um, maybe even more so than the legend, and this guy's only the common too. He entangles all allies and enemies and then destroys all green gems. 
Entangling all allies may not necessarily be a bad thing, because one thing to note about Entangle is you can't actually lose attack while you are Entangled. Uh, you can't gain it, nor can you lose it. So, in a way, that could be used as a positive occasionally. But uh, what makes it really good, though, is the fact that, yes, it entangles all enemies as well. And uh, there are a couple other things that can do this, though this is the cheapest way to actually entangle uh, every single enemy on the enemy team. Not only that, but it also destroys all green gem, not removes. So that means you actually gain all the mana for the green gem. So let's say there's like 12 green on the board. Well, you just got yourself 12 green from uh, using this guy. So um, he's actually pretty good. Of course, his traits are pretty bad for the most part, other than like nature link. But uh, other than that, yeah. Uh, and uh, oddly enough, he does have nimble, so he can't even entangle himself. That can be good or bad. Um, it really, the situational uses that you would kind of try using this, uh, the fact that he is nimble would kind of make that not work. You could always just go with the not entangle yourself at all route, and you could do things like Christine X's with it and other stuff that have a nimble, and then you don't even need to worry about the aspect of it entangling you. You can just entangle the entire uh, enemy team with it. So there's a couple different ways that you can go uh, about using it. And uh, this thing is useless. Nah, that's all you really need to know. <laughs> Give a bunch of life to all allies boosted by brown gems. Cause a random status effect on another random ally. And that isn't a positive status effect. That is a negative status effect. Um, it is quite a bit of life for a very, very low mana cost. But uh, the fact that it creates a uh, negative status effect will generally not really be worth it. Of course, it can make things like death mark and stuff like that. Maybe some very select situations with a mercy. It could be okay. The only real big issue is that there isn't many things that boost based off of their HP. And the best thing that boosts based on HP is actually a red-yellow as well. So this would be completely conflicting with the uh, Bull Taurus, which is the main thing that you may try utilizing with that. I guess you could try utilizing this thing with a Def uh, and see how that kind of works. Wouldn't really advise it too much though. And yeah, that's all of the new troops from the New Kingdom, of course, Decrupted Erska being the uh, one that was just added for the events. I didn't even go into that page because we kind of did all the keys, but yeah, you can get them for 300 glories. Assuming you're opening any event keys this week, you will get way more than you ever need of this guy, so... Um yeah, you probably don't even need to buy him unless you need red-purple trait stones. Uh, most notable thing for this, if you're a newer player, would probably be something like a Mist Stalker. Later in the game, you'd probably want to get up your Dragon Soul, especially if you're using that a lot for PvP or just for soul farming in general. And uh, yeah, let's get into some teams now and uh, see what we can do. So let's start with um, one of the odder ones. Uh, we're going to go with a Great Maw King uh, Mikale, or Mikhail, or however you say that. Uh, Corrupted Erska and a Apothecary. Generally, I don't like using a mana generator where if the front line dies, it won't be able to generate in anything. Though, there doesn't appear to be too many options with this guy. I was expecting a bit more uh, from him as far as his usage. It's just the way that his mechanic works. As I mentioned earlier, you can't actually re-enrage your first slot that easily with him. And this becomes a really big conflict because, of course, the only slot that you really need in Rage is your first one for the most part. Maybe second occasionally if things are going bad. But uh, you really don't need more than the first two slots in Rage. The fact that it will keep missing on your first slot is a very, very big hindrance to uh, the team. So let's, let me just get the uh, uh, Queen. I mean, Queen. Get me, let me get the Mercy out the way right there uh, just so we don't have to deal with it. Of course, this guy does do his full damage right now. There was a glitch earlier where he wasn't that is has been fixed. All the glitches were involving with the uh, most recent patch on Friday, you know, that little mini patch. Uh, they have all been resolved as of uh, the uh, Monday reset. So as you can see, it does 27, which is supposed to do. The uh, base damage that it does plus the 6 for being uh, enraged. Also, it's a 6 now instead of 8. Uh, on I think on mobile it always said uh, 6, but on uh, on PC it was saying uh, 8 earlier. But yeah, it does do 6 now, unfortunately, which is even weaker. Though I believe they did buff up his base attack. That or he gained a lot of magic from getting to Mythic. One of the two. Uh, okay. So we'll go and do the Enrage, which is kind of the whole point of uh, showing this little guy. Uh, oh, and also you can get really unlucky, and uh, that can happen too. You Enrage literally everyone except the slot you need Enrage. Good job. Uh, well then, <laughs> I was not expecting that. That was actually the first time that has happened to me where I got a triple and it didn't actually hit first slot, but of course that is a thing that can happen. Um, well, what do we do from here? I guess we just keep getting our mana then. Um, there we go. Now we can enrage. 
And now you'll see what I mean when I say it's hard to re-enrage the first one too. So right now, even though we will obviously get enraged just by clicking in purple, actually I'm going to kill him first. I will obviously get an enrage from taking any purple, but the problem is this enrage will not automatically target our first slot. Obviously he's the one that needs it. If we go and throw this down, there's a, of course a chance that it will become him. But uh, let me just show it on one real quick, just as an example. Obviously, you wouldn't actually do this move. You'd do that one probably right there. Uh, or right there would probably be the best, too. But let me just show one. Uh, I'll probably get unlucky and I'll actually hit him. Or actually, technically, that'd be lucky. But uh, as you can see, it ended up re-enraging that guy. Uh, it didn't enrage him, uh, even though he's the one that doesn't have the enrage. And in this current state that it is, it's really, really not worth using this thing. Because it's so ridiculously hard to re-enrage your uh, first slot with it. But I figured I'd show it. Actually, I didn't really get to utilize enrage a single time. That was basically just Great Maul being a Great Maul while showing enrage. But uh, yeah, this is that guy. I wouldn't really advise using him. Uh, you're probably going to get a bunch of him if you open up event keys and stuff like that. Uh, of course, if you're going to get the red purple trait stones, you're going to get a bunch of him as well. But uh, yeah, there's not much use with how he currently interacts. Though he may interact differently in the future, so still maybe something that's okay to have. Uh, definitely get at least one of him, of course, if you're going to do anything, uh, just for collection purposes. But uh, yeah, not the best of troops, that is for sure. So on to the next team. Uh, there are bonuses, of course, this week. They even go over many things on the event objectives yet. But uh, of course, we have 25% to all... Um, oops, wrong page. 25% uh, to all uh, Urskea, 25% to all Wild Folk. I actually forgot to double check. I don't believe anything has a 50% this week. You know, that would have been something good to check earlier. <laughs> uh, wild Folk. Actually, let me type in Wild Folk. Uh, that'd be the easiest way to tell. Uh, yes, I am correct. There is nothing... Wait, there's that few Wild Folk these days? Okay. They keep making... Wild Folk used to have a lot, but then they kept making subcategories, which take, took them all away. But yeah, Wild Folk doesn't really have that many options. And yes, nothing has 50% this week for once. Yay! So, uh, that's the thing. Anyways, other events. Uh, of course, all our Skea. Have the 25% that was a given. Um, bonus trait stones. If we use wild folk, we will get a bunch of extra trait stones. If you use the full wild folk teams, I will be showing one uh, right after this. And uh, I wouldn't really advise using this. Most wild folk teams are pretty slow for the most part. They can definitely win, but they're towards the slower side. And uh, all you really have to do is just win a bunch in PvP this week, and uh, you'll get all of your uh, event gems automatically. You can also do it in Explorer, so if you want to farm in Explorer or in PvP, um, it should be a relatively easy week, even though you need 500, because uh, both of these things are the two main things that you do to kind of farm up resources, and you're just passively going to get this uh, this week anyways. So, pretty simple event week, other than the Wild Folk thing, mainly because there's not too many Wild Folk options, but here's one. I haven't really showcased Salvani more since he got buffed uh, a couple months ago, or whenever that that was like it was like two months ago whenever the last patch was i believe he got buffed uh with the bark skin and everything like that um but yeah he now has uh bark skin uh 33 skull reduction and 20 percent agile he's the only troop currently in the game that has um both mitigation and evasion which is kind of nice because that makes it a lot harder for him to really die off the of skulls uh not as good of course as like a gorgotha like 75 percent or something like that but still pretty good um, and it has potential. It's pretty unique in that factor. So the team we're using right now, essentially what we're going to be doing is uh, trying to avoid those spirit fox. He has a lot of spirit foxes, which may ruin me trying to show this team properly. Uh, that is an annoying amount of spirit foxes on this team. Uh, luckily, we just got a really good alignment right there. Um, so we'll go... We have a blue to purple convert on us. We just need to find a way to utilize this. And somehow... We still don't have it. One really nice thing about him is he can, uh, similar to that of like anointed one or something, he gain he can gain attack without actually using his turn, which uh, can be pretty useful. Um, right here, I think we just throw a silence and see what he does next turn. So that will make it so two of them won't be able to get their uh, thing off. We'll probably be able to kill the other one before he even gets to uh, do anything there. Oh, oh, we just had alignment there. Fail. Uh, I could have gone for that. Oh, wait, never mind. We still have it. Okay. Okay. That's uh, actually correct. So, we'll go and uh, take away some of the attack. Never mind. We only have one target. That's going to be a bit annoying because uh, generally with him, we do want to have multiple targets to be able to keep aiming down. Uh, and since we only have the one, we will not be able to steal as much attack. Actually, we won't be able to steal any more attack than what we just did. Uh, generally, you will be able to attack buff and steal uh, many, many, many amounts of attack. 
uh, and probably get him up to 100, but because of all the stealthies, that actually is countering us out quite nicely. But uh, we can do this, give it an HP and attack buff. This makes it super, super tanky. Um, it's I really underestimate how tanky this thing is. I was testing it just a little bit, uh, because I haven't used him pretty much since he got buffed. But uh, yeah, he's actually not that bad now. So anymore. Essentially what he does is steals attack from an enemy. Uh, it is steal, as in if they don't have it, you don't get it. Like for example, he has, uh, the Christinex has an 88 right now. If we go and cast this, that's only going to give us uh, his 5, which would bring us up to a 93. You can only steal what they have. So it literally means steal. Uh, if they don't have it, you don't gain it. And... Um, then it transforms all blue to uh, purple, and it boosts the effect out of 3 to 1. The boost ratio doesn't really come into play that much. Um, generally, two casts will be enough to uh, reduce someone out. Uh, this lane in the game almost seems like one cast is enough too with the boost ratio. Basically covers the gap against uh, most troops, which is kind of nice. A uh, great way to get a uh, attack down on a single troop. Obviously, their front line would be the best thing to get their attack down on. The only big issue with him is he doesn't always get all of their attack. And if it's something like a Scion or something that triggers on Skulls that you want to neutralize, he won't always be able to do that in a uh, single cast. But as you can see, his Skulls are completely pointless if he does end up getting any. Um, it's zero attack, so it's going to be doing uh, absolutely nothing. Uh, he would generally be used in more Skull-oriented teams, but of course no Wild Folk in the game currently create Skulls or even are Skull-oriented. He's basically the only one that's really more towards the uh, Skull-oriented side. And here, of course, that does pretty much nothing. Uh, since he has no attack to steal. So uh, we'll probably be able to steal his uh, new troop that comes up, mainly just trying to shuffle the board, and nope, he's not even going to get a new troop. We just take the skull, and uh, yep, another skull, and that is match, and you'd eventually just reach the point where you one-shot everything with a uh, gigantic version of Savasi. And there we go. That's all wild folk, and as you saw there, we end up getting the, uh, right here, the two times trait stone, and as I mentioned all the times, don't uh, don't forget that it gives you two of the exact same trait stone. It doesn't actually give you two different ones, unfortunately. So if you're getting a really bad trait stone, well, you just got two of that bad trait stone. But uh, of course, if you happen to get lucky enough to actually get like the uh, runics and stuff like that, and the uh, arcanes, then it's definitely really really nice when you end up getting a uh, double version of that. And one last final team. Ooh, krakens. The video killer. <laughs> no, we should be able to destroy them pretty quick with this. Uh, most of you have seen this. I've actually been using it on stream uh, quite a bit to show the new legend. But uh, it's now fixed now that the legend actually does what it's supposed to do. So let's go show it again. And the idea, uh, basically what you do with this is you just get up your um, apothecary. Your apothecary then feeds you all your brown and then you just destroy them like crazy. And whoa, first turn win? Can we get first turn win? No, we don't have brown alignment right now. Ah, uh, so close. <laughs> if we had alignment right there, we could have gone for it. Unless I'm missing it. That wouldn't be the first time I missed alignment. No. That does look like there's no play. So we'll just have to take the skull. And now we have alignment. So let's get going on this team. Take out brown. Ooh, not enough mana going though. Well, we'll need another apothecary. We have him in rage, so we could always just use his new uh, ability, I guess. So let's go do that. Of course, it does not more damage now. Boom, 30 on everything. Very nice pokes. Doesn't seem like we can take Apothecary mana. It doesn't help that I just destroyed all the greens and came one green short. I was kind of hoping that would be enough mana. Uh, I don't normally count out uh, how much a explosion will actually do. Uh, since it gives 70%, it's a little bit harder to actually count it out. Especially since you don't always know which way it'll round. Okay, so he has that. He didn't cast it though, which is nice. So we're not going to get entangled. That would be really, really annoying if we did end up getting entangled on first slot. Okay, good. That was close. Uh, of course, we could always apothecary if that did happen. And there we go with the first enraged kill of many. So let's go get re-enraged, get our mana up, and now we won. So yeah, that's match. This is, this is completely over at this point. Once you get that going one, with the enrage, he just keeps enraging, keeps sculling, and it is quite, quite, quite fun. Um, yeah, I don't really find him to be much of a caster. He can cast, of course. Um, he doesn't normally get to really utilize it that much, though. Hey, a Celestial Trait Stone. I kind of clicked through it real quick, but we end up getting two Celestial Trait Stones there, which I don't actually need more of, but uh, that could have been nice. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's just do one more battle with them real quick. Uh, hopefully we can get a better start than what we did the previous time. Uh, that or even worse start. Actually, this board isn't too bad, but... Uh, yeah, we'll take the blue down into the green, and we do get full man off that. Let's see if we can do a turn two. We'll do this on... 
I'm tempted to take the purple. I'm really tempted to. I'm just afraid of what our follow-up will be. Because now we don't have one. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I should have just went for the convert. That wasn't a good idea. Especially since... Well, actually we're still enraged. So I guess that's okay. But uh, yeah, that wasn't the best of moves to take right there. Because this move is now useless. And the board is probably going to be useless for a couple turns now. Uh, we have a Keeper of Souls. But again, the board is useless to us at the moment. Uh, yeah. There's nothing we can actually convert out for much value. So we definitely should have went for the convert there. Bad idea, so we'll just go and uh, wait it out a bit. I believe that should be useful to us. Somehow it is not. Yes, it is. Never mind. We can do that on uh, purple. Get this going then. That should give us an alignment on brown, hopefully. And yes, it does. And that should pretty much be matched now. So we throw it down to Shegra. Boom. Keeper of Souls. Boom. And can we get an Enrage into a Skull? Actually, that wouldn't be full damage. Can we row kill for anything? Because we do have the row kills. We can drop uh, gems down if, by a 3x3 three three and then get them to connect. Like, for example, we could do it there and then get some browns if we wanted to. It wouldn't be an extra turn brown, but it would be some browns. Okay, it doesn't look like we have any good connections. Unless I'm missing one. Which we could be. I want to try taking brown into skull if we could, but it doesn't appear to be around. And I don't think we have any drops either, so we'll just take a standard skull here. And just let him poke us, and then we poke him back for the kill, because with the Enrage, with the 1.5 times extra damage. Oh yeah, by the way, I should probably say what Enrage is, because many of you might not actually uh, really recall what it does, because Orc is basically the only thing that had it previously. I keep saying Enrage, 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 but I never actually said what it does. Of course it does it does say on the card, but um, uh, essentially what Enrage does is it just gives you uh, 1.5 times uh, more skull damage to your next attack. And it ignores all of their traits. So, for example, if they had, like, stone skin, if they had evasion, if they had anything like that, it would always hit them if they had evasion, or it would always hit through all their mitigation if they had something like armored, stone skin, granite skin, any of the other skins, any of the reductions. Uh, it just ignores all their traits, kills them out uh, through all of the mitigation, and uh, it's basically just a more consist consistent way of uh, being able to do skulls. And uh, skull spam is pretty heavy right now. Uh, mainly because there are uh, two actual uh, converters that do skulls instead of just one. Every other color only has one, whereas uh, skulls do have two. They have, sh or actually, actually, I shouldn't say that. There are a couple other converters for other colors. Never mind. There actually are several because there's things like deckhand for blue, and there's things like green slime for purple. Generally, these troops aren't really used as much, but Shagro definitely is for red skulls with the uh, six red gem spawn, and then it converts all of them to skulls. That is one of them that's commonly used. And of course, uh, converters in general, like Keeper Souls, Apothecary. Uh, Green Seer, Alchemist, uh, Hellcat, uh, Giant Spider, Valkyrie, all of those are really, really good to use right now, particularly on PC after the um, the way that they reworked uh, gem spawning as of recently. But anyways, that is the new event. If you guys have, have any other questions about the event or anything else with Gems of War, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Best of luck with your event key openings if you are doing those, though do, do keep in mind Christine X is next week, so you may want to save for that Christine X, because even if you don't intend to use it on Guild Wars, Christine X is still uh, one of the best troops in the entire game at the moment. So I'll see you all later, thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.